I haven't been a fan of the Ford Racing series up to this point. All of the games did have something good about them, but those things were overshadowed by the things that were bad, and the bad things were different in every game. Some of them didn't have a very long career mode, and others had career modes that were quite boring. But my main issue with all of them was that the car lists were way too small. The reason why they were so small was because they only had cars made by Ford and none of them had cars made by Ford subsidiaries, apart from one Mercury. That all changed in 2008 when Off-Road was released on the PlayStation 2, PlayStation Portable, PC and Nintendo Wii. It was developed by Razorworks who had developed most of the Ford racing games in the 6th generation and it was published by Empire Interactive, which was known as Explosive at the time. The game was also released in North America as well, under the name Ford Racing Off-Road. Just like Ford Street Racing, there are two sides to the progression in the game. But unlike Ford Street Racing, you don't need to do some of one to be able to do some of the other, except for when it comes to buying cars. You have your normal career mode, and here you get from one side of the map to the other by doing various races and different types of events. A lot of the different types of events have been carried over from the older games, and in a lot of cases they are harder because of the unpredictability of driving off-road, and so I had to complete this in a weird way. What I did was try to do as many of the races as much as possible to earn money and a few of the other events where I could unlock cars just so I could buy faster cars and then go back to do the other events. I don't really like the fact that I had to do that, and the way that the career mode is laid out is a bit weird. I don't think the whole map idea was that good, and they should have just stuck to the list menus, which everybody else were doing. But I do like that they were trying something different. It's just a shame that the idea didn't work out well. The other game mode is the tournament, and it has nothing to do with the normal career mode whatsoever. So much so that you have to start collecting cars from the beginning again. At least you don't need to unlock them, and the game gives you 100,000 credits instead of just 6,000 in the career mode. The tournament is just racing, which I'm completely fine with, as apart from the fact that a lot of the car list is made up of Land Rovers, the racing is my favourite part of the game. You do need to go back and forth between the two game modes every now and then to unlock cars, which is a little bit annoying, but it was a huge improvement over Ford Street Racing. But what isn't a huge improvement is the AI. The AI are quite stupid, and a lot of times they don't really know where they are going, because they could look like they're going in one direction, and then all of a sudden they will cut across the track to take a shortcut, and in some cases they will hit you like as if you're not there. I remember buying this game in 2008 for the PlayStation 2, and it's the same copy of the game that I'm playing for this review, but it was £5 brand new from a supermarket, which shows just how little money was spent on the game's development. I say that, but both Razorworks and Explosive went bankrupt not long after this game's release, so that is something to think about. I do think that the physics are fine though, but the developers probably just used the exact same physics engine as Ford Street Racing, which I think was being developed at the same time as this game. Ford Racing Off-Road, or just Off-Road depending on where you are in the world, only has 12 tracks, which I am fine with, because the events are quite long. Those 12 tracks are split up into 3 categories, which are Desert, Water and Ice. They are quite detailed compared to other off-road games in the 6th generation such as 4x4 EVO 2, but I don't really like the layout of any of them, and I think it's because of the overall arcadey feel of the game. Off-road only has 18 cars and trucks. That isn't a lot at all, and I think the developers should have included some of the older cars just to bring the total number up a bit. They did include Land Rover as it was a part of the Premier Automotive Group, which included Land Rover, Jaguar, Aston Martin, Volvo and a few other manufacturers that Ford owned at the time. That makes the fact that there are only 18 cars even worse. 
Now because Off-Road was pretty much made to advertise Ford products, every car that is in the game was either in production at the time or was a concept. You have Land Rovers such as the Discovery 3, Defender 90, Freelander 2 and the Range Rover Sport, but I'm surprised that the normal Range Rover isn't in the game, seeing as that was Land Rover's flagship model. And it was made with the 4.2 litre supercharged V8 at the time, so it would have been very fast. The car models look good, they pretty much look the same as the models in every other Ford racing game from the second one onwards, but I didn't really have an issue with those either. Off-Road or Ford Racing Off-Road is a bit of a frustrating game to begin with, but my overall experience playing it was quite good, and I didn't think it deserved the low scores that critics gave it at the time. The racing is alright and it has got a nice selection of cars that were in production at the time of the game's release, but it would have been nice to have some of the older cars from the two manufacturers and the Volvo XC90 as well. The physics are good, but the AI are not at all. Tracks look detailed, but the layout could have been a bit better. It's kind of a shame that this was the last Ford racing game, but a game like this wouldn't sell well today, unless it was on mobile. This has been my review of Off-Road or Ford Racing Off-Road on the PlayStation 2. If you like this review then please give it a like, if you didn't then give it a dislike and if you want to see more then please consider subscribing and joining the Discord server linked in the description. Goodbye.